I know a lot of us have already started um, mission work. Others want to start, and God is going to give us a kickstart or a push towards the right direction. He says, go ye therefore. And we thank God for Pastor Mapumolo. You can speak to us, sir. Thank you. <clears throat> I greet you, my brothers and sisters, this morning in the name of Jesus. Can I confirm that I'm audible? Loud and clear, my pastor. Thank you very much. Shall we pray together? Our Father and our God, we thank you this morning for your love. We thank you for your care. We thank you, Lord, for waking us up this morning. We are witnesses of your grace and your care and your love. As we reflect on your goodness, we ask therefore, Lord, that you please speak to each heart in a relevant way. And we thank you that, Lord, you have heard our prayers. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Many of us this past week have been watching the Olympics. And this has been a very interesting period indeed, especially for those who, who follow Olympics. And what makes it uh, especially exciting is the heroics that come with it. The Olympics, for some reason or another, for some of us, remind us of the importance of being ready to be on the podium. Thing that the, the, the athletes go through the rigorous programs that they undergo for them to be at their best and to succeed at the Olympics. One of the former sprinters in the Olympics by the name of Morris Green, a very well-known champion in the Olympics said when he was asked about uh, being a winner, being a champion, he says, you know, for you to be a champion, you need a special mindset. He says, you need to train like you are number two, but you must compete like you are number one. Now this, my dear friends, is the mindset that gives birth to a champion. And one of the well-known sports psychologists who knows also himself a lot about Olympics who trained some of them. And he says, look, it's the four kinds of mindsets that a champion must have for the next performance. But this morning I just said, and, uh, and that mindset, he says, is belief. And so champions go to compete believing that success is the only option, despite the real possibility of failure. And, and when, I, when I think uh, uh, deeply about this, this concept, I, I remember, of course, about our own Olympics as, as Christian, uh, because we will never be part of the kingdom unless, of course, we believe. And, and, the, and the Bible is, is very clear on, on this one. And, and in Hebrews 11, verse 6, and the Bible reads as follows, and without faith, it is impossible to please him. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. And without faith, it is impossible to please him. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. And so my friend, 
God has placed all of us in this world to be ready as it were for our own Olympics that will take place when Jesus comes again. Because on that day, we will be called upon the podium to receive the trophy that will be born out of the belief that all of us would have had as we journeyed through life. And so therefore this morning, I just want to encourage each person under the sound of my voice that as we begin this day, as we begin this week, all of us have a mission and that mission is to train like you're number two. And, and training like you are number two may mean a number of things to all of us. It may mean number one, that uh, you need to get up early like you never done before. It, mean, it may mean being particular about your lifestyle choices. It may mean being loving people as if you'd, they've never, you've never been disappointed by people. It may mean being so disciplined as if, as if it is your passport to heaven. It may mean confronting your fears as if your success depended on them. But also it may mean trusting God as if this is your last day on earth. So therefore, whatever training like you are number two means to you, I believe that as and when you live and operate at that level, you can compete like you know, number one. You can fulfill the mission that God has placed in your heart. And all of us have passions, all of us have gifts, all of us have talents that God has given us. And all of them must be used as part of our mission so that we are able to achieve that which God has set for all of us. So I believe that after the training of your life as number two, after your sojourn in this life, when Jesus come, we will step up on the podium of victory because we woke up early for our spiritual sustenance in the midst of wintry excuses not to do so. My dear friends, you cannot be in the podium of those that will be called by Jesus, of those whose words will sound to them, you have been faithful in the least, enter thou to the joy of thy Lord, unless you would have learned to wake up early, even when it did not feel like so. I want to submit to this morning that uh, training like you are number two, may also mean to you that you need now to to read more, you need to study more so that you can be empowered and be wiser than ever before. I want to submit also this morning that training like you number two may mean to, to realize that uh, lifestyle choices determine who you become and where you end up in your life. But if you have trained to be number two, if you have, if you have learned and understood the importance of life choices, when he comes, I want to assure you that my dear friends, you will also be in that podium because you have understood the impact of lifestyle choices, not only in this world, not only in our journey, but also in preparation for Jesus come. When he comes, you will be in that podium simply because when you trained like you're number two, you would have realized as, as the proverb of Iceland says, he who lives without discipline dies without honor. And so as we, as we go about doing God's mission, it requires some discipline in our lives because without discipline, there is no podium. Without discipline, there is, there, is, there is no victory. My dear friends, when he comes, I believe if you have trained to be number two, you would realize that sometimes fear is a thief that preys on people so that they don't get what they might had it not be for fear. I don't know what is your fear in this life, in this journey, but you know what, with God, we can confront all of our fears and our concern as we go through this life. And lastly, my dear friends, 
when he comes, after having trained to be like your number two, you would have realized that trusting God is the torch that lights up the pathway to God-designed destiny. Mm. Trusting God is the torch that lights up the pathway to God's desired destiny. I want to challenge you this morning, therefore, as we begin this week, to reflect on your mission. And your mission is what God has placed in your heart. Your mission is to be a blessing to others. Your mission is to believe that not only God exists, but also he can enable you to become that which he has planned for your life. Therefore, as you crisscross this week, please train like you are number two, and you will at the right time stand at your desired podium. May God bless you as we go through this day. In Jesus' name, amen.